Welcome to Feedback, an on-the-go podcast shining a light on the latest products from the world's top electronic suppliers. Brought to you by Avnet and SupplyFrame. On the Feedback podcast, we ask our guests a series of questions to learn more about the products they specialize in. Today, we are joined by Alexandra Hazer, a senior industry standards engineer at Molex. Alexandra represents Molex in a number of industry groups, working with both customers and competitors across PCIe's, SAS, IEEE, and SFF technologies to help define a path towards the next generation for each. Welcome to the Feedback Podcast, Alexandra. Could you tell us how you came to be in your role at Molex? Yeah, thanks so much. Great to be here. Uh, I've been working with Molex for about seven years. I started off is, as a signal integrity engineer working on our IO and enterprise products. And then I have more recently I've shifted into a standards role. So now I represent Molex in several industry standards groups, um, including PCIe, SAS, IEEE, SFF. Um, and within those groups, I collaborate with uh, customers and competitors to try to determine what the next generation of technology looks like. How is your role at Molex unique from other roles in the industry? One of the, the ways that I, I think my role is more unique than others is, is the way the different standards groups interact. Um, so for example, PCIe tends to focus on like the electrical performance and the, the protocol signaling and things like that. But at the end of the day, you want like a set of connectors that people can just pick up and use for PCIe. And PCIe tends not to get into the details of how that's defined from a mechanical standpoint. So that actually gets done in the SFF TA twig group under SNEA. Um, and so one of the things that I do is I, I act as a liaison between those two groups. So for example, as PCIe is driving data rates higher, uh, we might find that you know some mechanical refinement on some of those connectors is needed. And so I would take that feedback from the PCIe group take that back over to SFF and work within SFF to, um, you know, either tighten up tolerances or reduce play in a latch, for example, or, or something else to try to help make that connector more robust and be able to support that higher data rate to enable the next gen PCIe technology. How has technology in these types of systems evolved over the years from your perspective? Yeah, when I, when I first started working in this industry, um, I think a lot of components of these type of systems were designed in isolation. You could look at one connector, for example, and just try to get, you know, the lowest crosstalk or the best insertion loss, and um, you could put the pieces together and it would work. And as data rates go higher, um, what we're finding is that you can't do that in isolation anymore. So you're really having to work with and collaborate with um, you know, people that make other parts of that system with your chip vendors and your system designers. And you can't look at any one part alone anymore. It really is um, kind of a culmination of what all the different pieces do when they put together and trying to figure out, you know, where you, what knobs you can turn to try to get that performance where it's needed. How does customer feedback influence the development of future products at Molex and broader standards across the industry? Yeah, so we'll supply our data to the different standards groups. Usually it's done kind of like in an open forum where everyone brings their data forward. Um, and customers will and end users will take that data and you know plug it into like their channel simulation, for example. Um, there tends to be some offline discussion there as well, digging into the details of the results that were gotten and what could be done to improve it and things like that. It's a little bit of give and take and trying to find those compromises, but that's the part of my role that I actually really enjoy is trying to figure out, okay, which of which of these things do we actually need to deliver? You know, where can we can we take a little bit more than maybe what the customer wanted to give up in terms of performance and and trying to find that balance of uh, finding a solution that both works and is cost effective. What are some of the larger challenges you've encountered in the last year surrounding the pandemic, shortages and so on? One of the bigger challenges we've encountered in the last year um, was within the SaaS community. 
So SAS 4.1 has been, I would say, in like a pre-release stage for uh, quite a long time now. And what that group usually likes to do is host a plug fest before releasing the standard. So they'll get everyone to bring their spec compliant devices and cables and, and basically bring all the pieces together from different vendors and then plug everything in and make sure it works to make sure that we wrote a good standard. Um, and that's typically done at a third party site. You know, everybody comes in person to help with any debug or anything that's needed. And none of that has been able to happen. Um, so we have finally organized what we were calling a virtual plug fest event. Um, where we shipped, everyone shipped products to a couple different testing sites. So having products spread over multiple sites instead of one central location was a, was a struggle. And then with the addition of not having um, vendors on site to help debug their piece of the puzzle has been challenging. So, you know, if, if something's not working, you're basically left to phone or, or email to try to figure out why. And it, it's just not as effective as having someone that's familiar with that product be there in person. Um, we are slowly making progress, but something that normally would be like a one week in-person event is turning into a couple months of, um, you know, off, offline conversations and uh, definitely a struggle. What is the total timeline to develop a new electronics industry standard and what steps are involved? So from the development side of things, you know, each standard is a, a little bit different, um, especially depending on how big their scope of work is. Um, but I would say typically it, it's probably like a two to three year cycle to develop a standard. Um, and that'll go from like initial brainstorming to uh, the tech, vetting out the technology and things like that. And then most standards will have some sort of like final check, like like a plug fest or an interop event or something like that to, to make sure that everything works in practice, not just in theory. But it is tough because it's the first time that people are usually looking at like that next generation device. And so there there can be some uh, some struggles with getting it up off the ground, but that's why it's important to have them. What types of new standards are on the horizon? Where's the focus for the next generation? On, on the networking side, we are starting to look at uh, like a 224 gig spec. Um, there's some talk of maybe some new IO interconnects to support that. Um, super early stages there, but it, it's exciting to hear uh, about new technology options, both on the hardware side and, and like on the protocol and signaling side. I think that's probably the most exciting bit is, is looking ahead to that, that newer data rate. It's like it's always a drive for more data, right? <laughs> Thanks, Alexandra. It was great talking with you today. Electronics industry standards lay at the foundation of designs everywhere. Companies like Avnet and Molex help define and influence future standards through their constant research and innovation. We want to hear your feedback. Leave your comments and let us know which products you'd like to hear more about on the show. For all the latest in EE news and electronics products, stay tuned to feedback. Visit avnet.com slash molex PCIE to learn more today.